right, it's free speech zone time again, and I'm going to start the show today talking about the idiocy of religion. Yeah, that's right, the idiocy of religion. Now, you see on TV all the time, they're comparing Christianity to Islam, and they're showing Islam in the most negative light, as if Christianity was somehow more positive. They're just as ignorant, and I'll show you what I mean. We're, I'm in the process of moving from a land house to a water base house. You cannot take as much stuff with you as you'd like to because the house you're going to would sink. So I'm having to give away my entire life of accumulated stuff, my entire metal fabrication shop, my entire photography shop, all sorts of stuff I have to just let go of. And in the process, I'm coming across all kinds of items. Everything in my house has a memory attached to it. And I ran across my little Tinky Winky. Okay, that's that brought back a memory from 1999. That's why I bought this. Because in 1999, and this hasn't changed any, this is still the same type of stuff, Jerry Falwell, who's admittedly not exactly a spokesman for Christianity, but this is typical of the type of thinking that happens with, with these religious extremists. We talk about extremists on his, the Islamic side. How about extremists on the Christian side? Did you know that Tinky Winky was a gay threat to your children? So says Jerry Falwell. And how does he know? He can tell. Because there are certain signs that a Christian can identify. I, I put those words in his mouth. But anyway, here's the sign. Here, let, let's put this down here. Go ahead and switch to that. And I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, okay. Tinky Winky right here. And you can see right here, this is a triangle. A well-known symbol of gayness. And look at the color. Purple! It's purple or bluish purple, whatever. We know that's a gay color. Therefore, Tinky Winky has to be a gay threat to your children. Well, now I was talking about this with a guy at Jubit's truck stop, sipping a cup of coffee with the Jubit's logo. I'll put this back down here and go ahead and switch back. And I didn't notice at first, but there's that famous gay triangle you can tell right away. And the color? Oh my God, I had no idea that Jubits was a gay threat. Well, okay, that's completely stupid. Completely stupid. But that's the type of thinking we got. You know, a triangle. Watch out! You know, you can tell. No, you can't. That's stupidity. And you'll find that type of stupidity throughout. Now, there's another type of stupidity that we have. I mean, typically on this show, we talk about what Everybody condemns, they call it, with the, they assign the pejorative to this show, conspiracy theorist. Conspiracy nut. Well, that's just a pejorative, but we have a problem within our own ranks of people who are interested in some of these things that are not exactly mainstream. And that is, that there's a bunch of people that put out a, you know, literally crap, as if it was true. In the 9-11 world, we've got Judy Wood putting out the idea of a ray from outer space or somewhere, a space platform. I'm not trying to belittle it that way. The idea of the ray itself, the directed energy weapon, is stupid and unfounded. Uh, but people believe that stuff, and it divides us up. So anyway, our first roll-in video today is from James Corbett. Remember, he lives in Japan. And he has a cohort here, James Evan Pilato. I don't think he's on this one. But anyway, he's from Media Matters right here in Portland, Oregon. If you don't watch his show, you ought to. Look it up on the Internet. And uh, anyway, James Corbett is going to explain to you how you can recognize disinformation. And he's going to show you a couple examples of recent disinformation. So go ahead and roll this one. Hello friends, this is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com with your thoughts for the day for the 5th of June, 2015. And I can't hardly believe it myself, but 
Unbelievably enough, the old, long-debunked footage of the missile hitting the Pentagon, quote-unquote, is once again surfacing in the alternative media. So here we see an example of this that just popped up in the last few days. Do these recently released, then-disappeared images show a missile hitting the Pentagon on 9-11? Must-see leaked images may reveal missile impact rather than jetliner struck Pentagon on 9-11. So what do we have here? We have an image, a looped image, of a few frames from a YouTube video that has been mirrored. So, I don't know, make of that what you will, but here's a mirrored YouTube uh, video with a watermark that, remember, it's a mirror, so it should be over here on the left side of the screen, 0205, and we see something. Is it a missile hitting the Pentagon? Unbelievable, earth-shaking. What do we know about this video? Well, um, absolutely nothing. Uh, it's just a still images captured from a recently linked, then disappeared video. I don't know what that means, but uh, neither does the person who wrote this article. Source unknown. So it's from a YouTube video, but who knows where this came from. I guess we just have to throw our hands up. But thank God it's been released, and we now finally have the smoking gun proof of the missile hitting the Pentagon. Or do we? No, in fact, this is long debunked fake video. And we can go back, for example, to 2011 when it was being promoted on Veterans Today by Gordon Duff, senior editor, 9-11 video of missile hitting Pentagon leaked. You'll notice that this time, this version of the video has the 0205 watermark correctly, because of course this isn't a mirrored image. This is the the uh, the video itself, and uh, the, here we go, an extreme close up of the uh, the actual missile hitting. There it is again. Wow, there's the there's the Pentagon. Ooh, look at that, unbelievable. There it is again. Wow. So all the elements of this uh, video are here. The zero two zero five watermark. And according to Veterans Today, at the time of 2011, this was a recently leaked declassified video that uh, was going to be that had been suppressed for 10 years. Just like in 2015, it's a recently leaked suppressed video, right? Well, how about this? If you go and search Cruise Missile Strikes Pentagon on YouTube, you're going to find this 2007 post of this exact same video. And it's the exact same zip video, 0205 watermark. And let's note there's a white flash, a sudden zoom out, some digital glitch, and then the missile hits. Please remember that sequence because it will come in... Handy in a moment. So it takes literally less than one minute to debunk this nonsense. Pentagon, aerial, footage, search. Scroll down a little bit. 35 millimeter stock footage of Washington, D.C. aerials. Uh, original video from Google. This is used for the fake missile Pentagon video. Well, that sounds interesting. Oh, there it is. 0205 watermark. Here's the exact same thing. This obviously still has the counter on because this isn't the purchased stock footage. This is the stock footage that stock footage companies put up online to get entice you to buy it. But if you uh, scroll around to the right part, you'll notice the exact same white flash slash zoom out and then the digital glitch. And here it comes, white flash, zoom out, digital glitch, right about here. There we go, zoom out, digital glitch, and oddly no missile hitting the Pentagon this time. Exact same footage, but this one has been crudely done in a video editor to insert a ridiculously fake image of a missile hitting the Pentagon. So, how do you spot disinformation? How do you source it? Well, let, let's let's put it this way. If an incredible, amazing, never-before-seen footage of something you can't hardly believe is on video surfaces supposedly out of nowhere, recently released, then disappeared, and there is no source, there's no link, there's no information, there's absolutely nothing to go by, it is almost certainly disinformation and should be treated as such until it is absolutely ironclad proven to you, proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is real. Because otherwise we are going to mix up debunked disinformation garbage with actual real valid 9-11 research. And that is the easiest way, as the authorities quote-unquote have done for generations, to debunk or to, to, to get rid of problematic truth movements. Well, that's exactly what can happen to 9-11 when we start promoting garbage like this. And I... I don't know, I don't presume to see into the hearts and minds of men to know whether or not these posts are by people who are deliberately promoting disinformation or people who have just been duped by a ridiculously and easily debunked fake video. But I do know for a fact that on October 12th, 2012, Gordon Duff of Veterans Today appeared on Mike Harris's morning broadcast on the Republic Broadcasting Network to admit that 40% of the stuff that he puts up on his site 
and contains deliberately false information. Probably going to be corrupted, so. Who says I'm right? But uh, according to my beliefs, and I have as good a, uh, access to information as anyone in the world, probably, anyone I know of, about 30% of what's on veterans today is patently false. About 40% of what I write is at least purposely, partially false, because if I, if I didn't write false information, I wouldn't be alive. There you have it, folks, straight from the horse's mouth. And don't believe me? Go listen to the actual broadcast itself, preserved up on archive.org, Veterans Today, Gordon Duff, 40% false information. And, well, we can see the fruits of that false information in posts like this one, 9-11 video of missile hitting Pentagon leaked indeed. So, at any rate, again, we don't know whether or not these people are deliberately promoting this disinformation, or whether they simply can't bother to research uh, these easily debunkable claims, but they are out there, and we have to do better as an alternative media generally. And having said that, there will always be problems and mistakes and and disinformation in the in a grassroots citizen journalist movement. That's just the nature of the beast. But, at the very least, as an audience, we can preserve our skepticism. And it's pretty sad to note that as I record this here on Friday, the 5th of June, 2015, around 1.30 p.m. Japanese Standard Time, only one of the 34 comments on this uh, post so far even mention the possibility that this could be a fake video. And in that case, good fake if faked? No, terrible fake if faked. I immediately debunkable fake if faked. Uh, well, news for you, it was faked. So all of these commenters just accept without question that this is a real video of the actual missile hitting the Pentagon and are no doubt spreading this feverishly off to their contact lists to be laughed at and mocked for uh, being poor researchers. That's the danger of this type of disinfo, and again, it's easy to spot when people hand you unknown, unsourced, unverifiable videos, or even just images of videos. Hey guys, I don't know where this is from, but trust me, this is a missile hitting the Pentagon. Chances are, it's disinfo. So on that note, can you spot the disinfo? MH17 flight, don't ask me where I obtained this footage, and be quick. Please spread it to all your contacts, and lo and behold, un believable actual footage of MH17 falling from the sky and exploding on impact. Here it is. Wow. Unbelievable. Please, guys, you better save this and, and spread it to everyone you know. Oh, wait. This is actually an Iranian aircraft that crashed in 2009. It's been on uh, on on all over the websites and uh, all over the internet since at least 2011. This is absolutely nothing new. This is just someone who's just posting something to their channel, trying to get some clicks and trying to get some subscribers, or someone who wasn't able to do the research to find out where this v video came from and didn't care to do so. So again, guys, let's not promote disinformation. And hey. Don't trust me, don't trust anyone else who comes to you with undocumented, unverifiable information. Search it out for yourself and make sure that something is true before you go around promoting it. This is James Corbett, CorbettReport.com. Thank you for your time. Okay, now there's all kinds of disinformation and also the tendency that people have to jump to conclusions. And I'm going to show you something here. The reason I have these two bottles of butane, this... This one is from uh, South Korea, and this one is from the United Kingdom. They're both exactly the same size. Let's see. <laughs> there. They're exactly the same size, same everything. So they are the identical sizes. But let me put this back down here so you can see it. Go switch to the other camera, and then, yeah, okay. So you see there, that says 300 milliliters, 10.15 ounces. This one says 300 milliliters, 5.8 ounces. Now, some, one of them is wrong. And I went ahead and looked them up. I mean, well, first thing we did was do the conversion from 300 milliliters and see which one is closest. Well, the UK wins. It was 10.14 ounces. It says 10.15. Because originally we thought these guys mislabeled it on purpose so they could sell it as if it had more. But no, that, they were right. So the one that made the mistake 
after doing a little bit of research, now this is pretty simplistic research, but, you know, don't just jump to a conclusion. This one, 5.8, well, they just made a mistake as far as I can tell, you know, okay. Well, but we've got other problems going on, like too much information in the wrong hands. Uh, the NSA is continually getting information together on everybody, whether they had anything to do with anything or not. And the way they're using it is sinister. I mean, behind the scenes, it's not part of their mandate or anything. This is just the way the people in the system abuse the power they have. And what they do is they use the collection of data to create, it's just like J. Edgar Hoover did, if you, re, if you recall. He compiled dossiers on everybody, every one of his enemies anyway. And that way he could control them, he could blackmail them. That's exactly what the NSA is doing. Have you heard about the Hassert scandal lately? The pedophile Hassert. Well, it turns out that the NSA had known about that for a long, long, long time. They had him documented to, you know, but here's the, the ironic thing. They wanted somebody like that. They wanted to find somebody who was totally corrupt that they had the goods on. They could pull the plug on him anytime they want. That's the story behind the Hassert scandal. The NSA pulled the plug on him to show the other folks out there, watch out, we have the power. We put our spokesperson in there, told him what to say, and he said it because he was afraid we were going to pull the plug. And then we pulled the plug just like we did on everybody else that ever trusted us. Noriega, for instance. How about him? <laughs> he was a loyal person to the American administration, and they messed him up. Well, anyway, here's a, uh, Alex Jones. It's a, we're going to show it in two parts because there's a commercial in the middle that we'll cut out, and I'll be back in that, in that time to talk to you. But the first part will be about Hassert and the... A little bit later in the story, we'll be talking about Rand Paul and his historic stand against the Patriot Act. So let's play this one. So joining us is Wayne Madsen to break all of this down. I tell you, Wayne, it's obviously very dangerous what Senator Paul's doing. He's a leader. He's a doctor. He's a family man. He's showing he's bold on the Constitution and Bill of Rights. He's showing that he's nonpartisan when it comes to defending our republic. He's the only senator to actually get up and try to shoot down the Patriot Act and put himself right in the face of the globalist uh, so-called juggernaut. This is true leadership. This is true Americana, and if we don't support this as a people, if we don't admire this, if we don't see this as heroic in the face of incredible tyranny, uh, then we can't get mad at politicians who become statesmen down the road uh, for not doing something. They're blackmailed. They're harassed. They're targeted by the media. They go through all sorts of dirty tricks. you got to be super clean to be able to do what he's doing. And he has really gone up a notch, in my view, from me liking him, trusting him, admiring him, not liking some of the politics he's played, but still knowing he's the best real politician out there in the polls who is a statesman that could beat Hillary Clinton. And he's not a warmonger. He wants to cut off foreign aid. But I tell you, I think he's in real danger now. They're trying to politically assassinate him. I want to get your take on that. But first, you were there for the presentation we don't have filters here and, and just have to read what, what, what Politico says. Wayne Madsen, former NSA officer, award-winning investigative journalist, best-selling author, Wes, WayneMadsenReport.com, uh, who broke the Hastert pedo ring news back in 2006 on this broadcast and at WayneMadsenReport.com, uh, joins us now. Wayne Madsen, thank you. Yes, uh, Alex, thanks. Uh, well, the, the uh, press conference was at 10 o'clock today uh, at the Senate uh, uh, Congressional Visitors uh, Center, and uh, Senator Paul led off the uh, press conference uh, announcing his uh, support for a Senate bill to uh, basically urge uh, the president uh, to declassify the 28 pages from the 
joint congressional report of 2002 on the failures of 9-11 and joining Senator Paul were uh, former uh, Senator Bob Graham from Florida, who was the actual chairman of the Senate and Intelligence Committee, who has, uh, of course, read those 28 pages, uh, was uh, the last final chop authority on those 28 pages uh, with the rest of the report. Uh, and he uh, urged, uh, and he has been urging uh, uh, the White House, I know he's visited the White House and urged them to declassify uh, the pages. Uh, uh, and um, uh, Senator Paul uh, announced that he has two uh, co-sponsors for uh, this Senate uh, bill uh, that would uh, declassify the 28 pages, and they are uh, Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat of Oregon, and Senator Kristen, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, I should say, of uh, New York. And um, uh, he said if uh, uh, he's also planning on uh, uh, attaching this bill as an amendment to the Defense Authorization Act next week. So Incredible. There, there are two avenues to get this uh, get this through. On the House side, uh, we had uh, Representative uh, Jones, uh, Representative Lynch, and Representative Massey speak. Uh, what we heard from both uh, Senator Paul and uh, the congressmen from the House side uh, are that they have resistance uh, from the uh, bipartisan leadership in both houses on getting uh, this through. They, they have very few co-sponsors, and it's quite clear that the leadership, uh, and that's Mitch McConnell in the uh, Senate and John Boehner, the House Speaker, and, and various chairmen of uh, various committees are just uh, trying their darndest to uh, – uh, to block this effort, and um, uh, Senator Paul made something uh, made an interesting comment during his presentation. He said that uh, the Saudi government uh, has expressed support for rele releasing the 28 pages. So I asked him a question at the press conference: uh, Who in the Saudi government would be in favor of that? Because the present King Salman. Uh, was the governor of Riyadh province before 9-11. And I understand from talking to uh, Saudi opposition forces, and these are democratic opposition forces, that um, uh, several al-Qaeda members passed through Riyadh when, when Salman was governor of Riyadh on their way to Pakistan and Afghanistan. And they uh, were given uh, logistical support, cash, and a whole lot of uh, support by the present king of Saudi Arabia. Yeah, that sounds like in a movie when the guy has a dead body in this trunk and he says, sure, search my car, just trying to play a confidence game. We know from different folks we've had on like Springman and others from the visa section in Jeddah that they were basically ordered by the CIA to let the 15 of the 19 hijackers in, even though they were flagged as terrorists. But when I get excited about Rand Paul, it's for this reason. He comes out, he points out that they've lied to us about spying on us. He points out it's not been used to stop terror. He points out that we've been helping fund ISIS. He brings up the fact that, hey, Saudi Arabia was allowed 9-11. Don't claim I'm against national security. Release the information. He really seems to be in their face right now. Uh, a lot of politicians are saying, we don't like your strategy. You're not playing it safe. You know, you're going to lose now for doing this. It doesn't matter. He's doing the right thing. And it shows how alien that is to the mindset in Washington. What do you make of what Rand Paul's doing and taking a leadership role in this? Well, uh, he had, uh, you know, I've, I've covered the politics here for a while. And to hear a, a Democrat like Bob Graham, uh, former governor of Florida and a uh, longtime uh, Democratic senator, was the chairman of the um, Senate Intelligence Committee, was actually thanking and praising uh, Rand Paul for his efforts, as as were uh, the the uh, members from the House side, uh, including uh, Democratic uh, Congressman uh, Stephen Lynch from Massachusetts. I mean, it 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 smells and looks like old fashioned statesmanship, and actually trying to have a free country. Yeah, I I, I was uh, somewhat uh, surprised to see a spirit of bipartisanship at that press conference today. I should also add that there was a a, Virgin, a Republican Virginia state senator in the audience, and he has uh, also proposed a resolution urging uh, the, the 28 pages. Uh, you know, that's just a sense of the uh, – that would be a sense of the Virginia Senate. Uh, they don't have any authority over that type of thing, but he's introduced a similar uh, resolution in the Virginia Senate. 
Well, I happen to know Rand Paul for 20 years, and I can tell folks he's the real deal. Uh, they're coming after him more than anybody. I think that for anybody who's smart, folks should know he's then the man to nominate uh, out of the Republican field. Uh, the uh, first lady uh, from there on the East Coast, uh, Miss Lindsey Graham, mm. uh, um, has come out, though, uh, demonizing him, saying he'd be a horrible choice for a Republican nominee. But the word is uh, that uh, Lindsey Graham might be getting ready to run. Well, he has, I think, uh, he's, his announcement, I think, is uh, either he's done it this week or he's planning to do it this week. And, uh, uh, yeah, there's uh, – I, I would uh, I would urge uh, some of his opponents to just send people to Columbia, South Carolina. I've heard about him in South Carolina from uh, a well-known uh, journalist for the state newspaper. And that is the record. That's the paper of record in South Carolina covers state politics in the state capital. So uh, these people are well aware of Miss um, South Carolina's um, um, past, uh, shall we say, exploits in the state. So he's fully compromised. I mean, if he comes out of the closet, th then he wouldn't be as dangerous. We're not attacking him because he's gay. We're attacking no. him because they can blackmail him with the information. And he's a hypocrite because he has sponsored a lot of anti-gay legislation. But the, the, the major thing is if he does come out, he's, of course, not going to be – not only will he not be elected president uh, or get the Republican nomination, uh, he probably won't get, win his seat again if he runs for re-election from South Carolina. So this is the dilemma that he faces because of his total uh, hypocrisy. Well, I mean, he thinks he's going to attack Rand Paul. We're not going to attack him right back. He's got another thing coming. We're committed to this fight. We know he's a dangerous person. We know he represents a dangerous mafia. And yes, everybody should recognize we have huevos the size of, you know, bowling balls to even be talking about these issues. But it's time it all comes down. It's time the House of Cards comes down. It's time that all of them, Boehner, all of them that are compromised. What's the, I know you've studied Boehner, and I know he's tied in with Hastert and the rest of, the, of that jolly crowd. Um, what's the dirt they've got on Boehner? I mean, when he's doing stuff that's 87% unpopular, like TPP with his with his uh, crew, with his state uh, constituency. I mean, they got to have something big on old Boehner. I know he famously handed out tobacco company checks on the floor of the house in the 90s that was illegal, basically, and then claimed it was legal. But I mean, what else do they have on this guy, the Speaker of the House? Well, I don't want to talk about his drinking because we've had very successful members of Congress in the past who were also alcoholics. So you can't use that. You, that can't be used as any sort of negative uh, when you talk about the past. Uh, and many of these were, you know, they may have been drunks, but they were also statesmen. We talk about former House Speaker Carl Albert and uh, Senate Minority Leader Everett Dirks and and, uh, and and Senate Majority Leader Mike Mansfield. Now, some of them, of course, were in Alcoholics Anonymous, but but they got the job done. So, yes, of course, Boehner is known as uh, pretty much a. Uh, uh, you know, a, um, a lush a fish <laughs> on, on, yeah, we're basically, yeah, he's, he's, they call him Mr. Merlot. He, he likes his red wine. And, uh, but I think, uh, you, you know, when you talk about Boehner, you got to talk about the lobbying. Uh, apparently there was talk about him having an extramarital affair with a, with a top lobbyist, uh, some years ago. So yes, there is a taint of scandal there, but, uh, and I really think that Boehner did not want to serve another term. Uh, in Congress, apparently he's been promised some big, uh, big job. Uh, he wants to move to Florida. He bought a big house in Florida, so clearly he he's looking at retirement. He so wants he to can, cash in on the looting of America. Yeah, and you know, so he can he can buy the best Merlot after he's retired and play golf all day. Uh, so it sounds like the, his greatest crime then in the club is he's not a pedophile because it seems like you got to be a pedophile to be up at the top uh, these days. Right. I think he, you know, I mean, he's very useful to some people, but I think he's he's a rather aloof uh, speaker. We have to really look at his uh, staff, senior staff members. Uh, uh, and that would be as as speaker. He has his own staff as speaker. Uh, they're, they're separate from his staff uh, where he represents his district in Ohio. Uh, and also you got to look at some of the committee chairs that he's appointed to these top committees. So I think the problem with Boehner is is his relative aloofness um, and um, from from, you know, the day to day matters. And uh, uh, 
but but the, the, the I'm not going to hold the drinking against them because, as I say, we've we've uh, had in the past. Uh, well, we'd be probably, hypocrites then too. So yeah, yeah. let's well, just get real. Yeah, right. Exactly. And uh, but uh, but but I re- re- really want to say that uh, in answer to my question, uh, Senator Paul said uh, when I asked him, I said, "Who specifically in the Saudi government?" Because of the. Uh, and I think King Salman, uh, as Governor Riyadh, his name is all over the 28 pages. Uh, and uh, he said he he'd have to get you know get that information. He couldn't recall who that official was. But the word I got uh, today was that the reason uh, this bill has been totally unsuccessful in, in getting more Senate support is because the Bush family is putting direct pressure on uh, Mitch McConnell, and we know that. You know, he's the other senator from Kentucky and ostensibly, uh, you know, uh, Rand Paul and McConnell, uh, they have a sort of a sub- mutual supportive relationship uh, politically and both Republicans from the same state. But that the Bush family and the oil companies and the Saudi lobbyists uh, and the Saudi embassy here is really putting a full court press on making sure. Sure. Well, for those that don't know, you broke it at the time. It was then in the Miami Herald. It was in the London Guardian. Uh, the Bushes were at a Carlisle Group uh, contractor breakfast that morning in D.C. at the Bin Laden table. George Herbert Walker Bush, uh, Bush 41, was there eating with them when the attacks took place. They were allowed to all fly out of the country when air traffic was grounded. So right. they don't want this whole Bush Saudi connection being opened up. And I think. Knowing Rand Paul, in his speech, that was a little bit of a backhanded. He's probably been threatened by the Saudis. That was a backhanded threat, probably, that, oh, and I know you want this released. Like, like right. you know, oh, you really want us to serve a search warrant on you. It's kind of a, I think it was more of a snarky remark. Right. It could, it could have been. Uh, I mean, he, um, he also said uh, there's, uh, by, uh, he's talked about the bipartisan support from uh, various committees. Uh, current and former committee chairs, uh, uh, former uh, intelligence uh, agency officials have urged um, this report to be, these 28 pages to be released. But Senator Graham, former Senator Graham, uh, held up another document. Let's talk about that document when we come back. And I want to get the latest on the giant gerbil, uh, Dennis Haster. Okay, well, they're having a commercial right now, so we'll come back in a minute. But, you know, in the meantime, uh, I thought. In the meantime, I'd like to point out that the, uh, the the tendency that I've seen in every single presidential election, as long as I can remember, is that the way you win an election is by telling you telling the American people how well you will kill other people, how well will you destroy the nation that we need to go conquer for our corporations to make a better profit, and. That seems to be the thing, and you know, if if it was put to you that way, I'm sure that many Americans would, you know, be abhorred. But what they're doing is going along with the idea that for some reason we have to kill people. Every president's job is to sell a murder to you, so that you get behind it. We're going to go murder the Vietnamese. We're going to go murder the Iraqis. We're going to go murder the Afghani's. And we always couch it as if they did something to us first, and that's a lie. It's always been a lie. Nobody has ever done anything to us, ever. Well, now that's probably a little inflammatory, but for all intents and purposes, that's true. We are the power nation. We are the number one terrorist sponsor in the world. We are the number one purveyor of death in the world. We are the number one seller of arms of mass destruction in the world. We sell to both sides. We sell to all sides. We even run all the sides so that we can guarantee better sales. That's what it's all about. Anybody that says different is a liar. Okay, now, we touched on the idea that the NSA was collecting information about whether or not somebody's a pedophile or whether they're a drunk or whether what, whatever vice they have that's going to disqualify them later. It's interesting to note that they really prefer the pedophiles because that's such a shocking thing. The Americans will shun him immediately now that they know he's a pedophile. But they knew it all along. It's been in the news. 
You just ignored it, right? It's a conspiracy theory, right? Okay. Well, then we get to this idea of the Saudis, the Saudi connection to all this. Why are the Saudis part of our government? Why do the Saudis get a free ticket when everybody else has to wait for the airplanes to fly again? Why are the 28 pages about the Saudis? Well, let's go ahead and roll the last few minutes of this clip. There's about seven more minutes left. Wayne, we got about three, four minutes left before the segment ends. Uh, you, you said that uh, Senator Graham, um, who was heavily involved in the 9-11 investigation, you name it, who's read the 28 pages that show Saudi Arabia was heavily involved, our government helped cover it up. That's bombshell right there. He had another document, Wayne Madsen. He, uh, yes, Senator Graham held up another document from the Treasury Department. It was a classified document, and it was about a Saudi organization uh, with strong ties to the Saudi government uh, that funded uh, al-Qaeda and uh, obviously funded some of the hijackers. It, this uh, document was, uh, he showed us the document, uh, it was probably about 90 to 100 pages in length. And he flipped through every page, and every single page was blacked out. Uh, there wasn't one item there that was uh, left open for uh, public view. So he's uh, urged uh, that document as well to be uh, released uh, by the uh, Treasury Department. Does this scare the real perpetrators of 9-11? I, I think uh, when you, from what I understand from people who read the the. Uh, the 28 pages, it, it's not so much what it says in the text. It may be what's in the footnotes and reference material is cited. And think of it as an onion. And when you start peeling back the onion, you get down to different layers and it opens up, uh, you know, different avenues for investigation. And that's obvious. Obviously, what the intelligence agencies and the Bush family, uh, and I say Bush family, we got to think of their extended family, the Dick Cheney's, the Donald Rumsfeld's, and and whatnot, uh, don't want this information to see the light of day, nor do the oil companies, and they're so tied in with them uh, that, uh, of course, have this relationship with the Saudi government. In closing, Wayne, what are they going to do when this ends up coming out, or it's already basically out, Defense Intelligence says our government's running al-Qaeda, what are they going to do? Well, I, you know, I mean, it's going to, I think, show people that uh, we're, we're lied to on a daily basis. And um, Wayne, hold on. Uh, back at 60, we'll do five more minutes and let you get back to reporting. He's up there on Capitol Hill right now. Uh, other points that you were about to add to that, and, and where do you see all this going? Because uh, obviously folks in the military are upset if defense intelligence leaked last week. Uh, the, and this was confirmed to be a real leak, that indeed the Army said we're ordered to Fund Al-Qaeda, fund the Salafis, which is Al-Qaeda Al as well, uh, basically ISIS. I, I mean, this really shows that, that why they're scared of leaks. Yes, and, and then we just had a revelation from the State Department. They admitted that the uh, former head of the Tajikistan Special Forces, trained by uh, Blackwater on a State Department contract, is now a top field commander for ISIS. So here we have yet another... Uh, uh, fact, uh, factoid that indicates that the ISIL, ISIS is a construct of uh, Western intelligence, the Saudis. How the do Turks they think is. they're going to get away with this? Well, I think the fact is that we're seeing more and more of these revelations, and they're being confirmed by the agencies. Of course, the Defense Intelligence Agency tried to worm its way out of that report that you mentioned about uh, that it was the policy to create a Salafist principality in Syria and Iraq to uh, bring down um, Bashar Assad. And ultimately, uh, the uh, Iraqi government, which is allied, uh, has very close ties with Iran. Um, but I, I, I don't think we see the resistance now from the agencies. There's people that want to get the truth out. That's really, I mean, that's your job was internal security <laughs> at the NSA. Uh, but, I mean, we see them going after uh, folks like William Benny and Drake and others, but, mm. but you've talked about how they spend a lot of their time now just spying on people in government, but it's not going to work when more and more people just start leaking. They can't stop everybody. We could see leaks at any time that could bring down the globalists. I think that's why they want to uh, have an Internet kill switch and things like that. 
Well, I, I think we're, we're seeing uh, more people going through more documents like the DIA report, and, you know, whatever the document was that indicated, yes, uh, this guy from Tajikistan, the head of their special forces, was in fact trained by Blackwater. Uh, I think uh, uh, people are getting smart on how, how to go through these documents, whether they're as a result of a Freedom of Information Act request or other from other sources. So I think uh, uh, sure. I think uh, we're getting we're getting better at what we're doing. And it's beyond the spin of sure we created Saddam, then he turned on us, or we created Bin Laden, then he turned on us. No. They are funding these groups whole cloth now and commanding them to engage in war crimes to destabilize the world, then attack the West so they can legitimize the police state. And, you know, this this is a dead duck politically. It's not going to fly, in my view. Right. And we had families there today at this press conference. I should mention that uh, one, one uh, young boy, 14 years old, was four days old when his father was killed on 9-11. So... Uh, the, and and the, and the daughter of one of the victims said, "We are the children of 9/11." They made a personal appeal to President Obama to release the 28 pages so they can at least uh, have some closure. They say they don't trust their government anymore, and and that's a theme we heard. We, the children of 9/11, sure. do not trust our own government. All right, Wayne Madsen, great job, WayneMadsenReport.com. Be talking to you more in the next few days about uh, official capacity here at Infowars. But welcome to the team, buddy. You bet. Thank you. All right, there goes Wayne Madsen reporting from Capitol Hill. You can hear the reporters chattering in the background. Okay, well, he was absolutely right. You should not trust your government. They have a track record that uh, is anything but honorable. Uh, in fact, you could even say that they never tell the truth, ever. Everything they say is a lie, and that's not just hyperbole. It turns out to be true. They treat you and me exactly like mushrooms. They keep everything secret and then they tell you lies about whatever they tell you. Um, at this point when you hear about some sort of scandal that involves possible wrongdoing in the government or somebody gets mysteriously killed and it just happened to be in police custody or whatever it is like that, you know, people say don't jump to the conclusion that it was skullduggery well, no, at this point, you have to. It's the onus of proof is back on the government now. If, if they want you to believe that they're innocent of evil doing, they have to prove it now. It's not the other way around. Because they've lied to us so many times, so many times we've caught them lying, and nothing happens. You know, take 9-11, for instance. Either, it, they, I mean, one of the things, it's the incompetence theory that the entire Air Force was incompetent. They couldn't find the target. In an hour and a half, they couldn't find the target. So if that's true, why aren't they all fired? Why didn't we replace them like Reagan did with all of the uh, uh, <laughs> traffic control people? You know, <laughs> No, in fact, the people of 9-11 got promoted. They got commendations. They got raises. They got, for God's sake, the CIA director who was supposed to have blown the chain of custody for the information that would have saved everybody on 9-11, which that's a lie, but basically they blame him for a breakdown in intelligence. And they gave him the Freedom Medal, the highest medal of honor a civilian can get. Something's wrong with this country when we honor deceit and corruption. And you think that it's going to be okay to vote again? You think that voting is going to solve your problem? Do you really? For goodness sakes, vote for local issues because you do have some influence on the local issues. But have you ever seen anything change no matter who won the presidency? Have you ever seen anything change? Have you ever seen us be saved from that terrible thing? You know, right now, the Republicans will win the next re election because our electorate, which you can recognize because they go around going, meh, meh, meh. The electorate is going to try to vote for whoever pretends to be the most warlike. 
in the debates. Whoever can kill the most people, whoever emphasizes national security the most will win. And, of course, our policy will continue to be killing innocent people all over the world so the corporations can make a giant profit. But are you going to continue to vote? You're going to play that game? What if they had an election and nobody showed up at all, ever? Period. Well, I guess we might not know it because they'd probably just hack in the numbers that they were expecting anyway. And you know what? If we all knew that nobody voted, we'd still accept those numbers because... Meh. We don't think for ourselves at all, ever. Americans have turned in to be the stupidest people in the world. Everybody in the world knows the U.S. is the problem except us. So anyway, a good example of that is what we do with whistleblowers. Two years ago, we just had the anniversary, by the way, two years ago, S Snowden brought out all the information about the corruption. Now, we kind of knew everything that he brought out already, but until then, they could dismiss it with the pejorative, you're a conspiracy theorist. You're just crazy. But now, those conspiracy theories have been vindicated with documentary evidence. And now they're pretending like, well, we, were, we knew it all along. We were going to just, yeah, we're all working for the same thing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they pass the Freedom Act that doesn't change anything. And like they said, the more wonderful sounding the name of the act is, the more danger it is to freedom and the American way of life. Just remember that. Patriot Act, the most sinister thing to ever happen. American Freedom Act, how terrible do you think that's going to be? This isn't just hyperbole. They've established that tradition. And they know how terrible it is because they secretly pass it in the middle of the night. Well, let's see what Russia Today has to say about the Bush administration and Edward Snowden and whistleblowers and so on and so forth. Let's go. We'll be right back. President Bush is breaking the law by spying on people in this country He's without dropping on Americans without court Could order. Could the government be listening into your private conversations? The secret wiretapping without warrants of communications between U.S. residents and people Listening overseas. of conversations and monitoring of emails without a warrant the under the law is unreasonable and unconstitutional. Abroad, means he's been warrant. lying to us about the program since it started when he's been telling us there's nothing the illegal government about what he's doing. In effect, can wiretap you. They can snoop on you. They can break the into your Bush house. They only listen to Americans if it involves Al Qaeda. These two say allowing not true. for the warrantless wiretapping of Americans. President Bush is breaking Most the law. Most experts in the of of communication. Some of the press, in particular the New York Times, have made the job of defending against further terrorist attacks more difficult. We're at war with a bunch of people who want to hurt the United States of America, and for people to leak that program and for a newspaper to publish it does great harm to the United States of America. They said all these publishers, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Guardian, will have blood on their hands from publishing these stories. But when we look at it, we see that these threats, these statements from the government about what we, the public, simply cannot be trusted to know because this is knowledge that's just too dangerous, is actually not true. Give us one example where this has caused harm. Show us anybody who's died as a result of this because you told us if any of these documents were ever made public, it would cause grave damage to the country. You notice there's a high correlation between how secret news is and how bad it is for the people. They don't trust us to know these things because it's embarrassing, because it could affect them politically, but it doesn't actually increase the threat to us as a public or a society. And it's for that reason that we need to look very carefully and very critically and the claims any official puts forward about how dangerous this sort of thing is. Now knock on the door. They've come for me. Agents raiding his home. I knew that I was being watched and I knew that I was being investigated. They actually brought down the presidential home because they thought I might be on the board. And there's no precedent for that. It had never happened before. I remember telling my immediate supervisor, what are we doing? As here he is telling me, don't worry about it. And don't ask any more questions. Yeah, don't ask any more questions. Yeah, now, we're supposed to be protecting whistleblowers, but 
this administration has prosecuted more whistleblowers than every single other administration combined. It's amazing. Um, it's, it's a lie that they want to protect whistleblowers. The last thing they ever wanted to do was protect whistleblowers. It's like Bush just said, what did he say? It will create great harm to national security if it ever gets published. No, it'll create great harm to your reputation as a truth teller. It'll create great harm to your economic abilities when you can't do under the table dealings with criminals. It'll do great harm to corporations who get no bid contracts because of cronyism with the vice president. It'll do great harm to people who cheat the American taxpayer while killing people all over the world. It'll do great harm to anybody that wants to lie. Just think about it that way. Well, here's another little section about Eric Edward Snowden. Two years two years into Edward Snowden's exile. With the two-year anniversary of the publication of the first leaks revealed by NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, this week, two years ago, documentary filmmaker Laura Poitras, along with journalists Glenn Greenwald and Ewan McCaskill, traveled to meet with Snowden and begin publishing his documents from a hotel room in Hong Kong. And two years ago today, The Guardian announced the leak by publishing the first document an order from the Foreign Intelligence Court demanding Verizon give up metadata from the phone records of millions of Americans to the FBI and NSA. With that, the National Security Agency's bulk spying program was exposed. And the symbolism of this first week of June was compounded this Tuesday when President Obama signed into law the USA Freedom Act placing some restrictions on that metadata collection program, a program Americans wouldn't have even known about if not for that meeting in Hong Kong. Today, in an op-ed published in the New York Times, Snowden writes that two years on, though we have come a long way, the right to privacy, the foundation of the freedoms enshrined in the United States Bill of Rights, remains under threat. Yet the balance of power is beginning to shift. With each court victory, with each with every change in law, we demonstrate facts are more convincing than fear. As a society, we redis rediscover that the value of a right is not in what it hides, but in what it protects. RT's Lindsay France breaks down the two years since Snowden's first relevations. The USA Freedom Act passed the Senate 67 to 32 and it sailed through the House of Representatives. It never would have happened if former NSA contractor Edward Snowden hadn't leaked secret documents pointing to the National Security Agency's policies of collecting Americans' personal data. Snowden fled the U.S. to Hong Kong in the summer of 2013 with millions of digitized classified documents. He dumped off his hard drives with journalists, then caught a flight to Latin America with a stopover in Moscow. That stopover ended with a revoked U.S. passport and the granting of asylum by Russia as the U.S. sought extradition and an espionage charge. From there, the documents were published rapid fire. They're still hitting the public today. Phone companies in collusion with the NSA to tap into customers' metadata. The FISA court granting investigators access to Americans' private information. Britain's spy agency, GCHQ, tapping into networks carrying the world's phone calls and internet traffic, then sharing the information with the NSA. Malware created by the NSA to target Google and other tech companies. The CIA trying to break into Apple devices for years. New Zealand spying on its closest neighbors in the Pacific and sending data to the NSA. And now we see the U.S. federal government reforming its policies in response to Snowden's actions. The enormity of these revelations could never have been foreseen. And as we wait for new information, Snowden has still not walked into a jail cell. He is still in hiding. The espionage charges still stand, even though the government is apparently changing its policies. In Los Angeles, Lindsay France, RT. Well, yeah, the, the whistle is already blown. We know they lied. We know they're corrupt. And they have to do something about it because it's just going to be worse for them if, if we know they're corrupt and they continue and they know that we know. Okay, well, anyway. Uh, so they, they tried something which is just typical. 
very typical. We got a problem. All we need to do is give these folks a solution that they can hold on to and talk to each other on the internet about. They can, we can have arguments under that video. The YouTube, put the YouTube video up there and we'll have arguments underneath it. You watch. And how do you do that? Well, you invent a bill and name it in such a way that it's supposed to undo some evil. So this, they, they came up with the Freedom Act, the USA Freedom Act, and it's supposed to be the countermeasure to the Patriot Act. But wait a minute, it's named exactly the same way the Patriot Act was, using a, a moniker that is patriotic. Well, what could be more patriotic than Patriot? Anyway, but it's exactly the opposite. So knowing that they have exactly the opposite of what the title says, then the USA Freedom Act must not be anything about freedom at all, right? That's the shame of it all. And what did I say about our voters? Meh. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to play this last cut. We'll go out on it, and it's only going to be partial. But we're talking about the USA Freedom Act, RT again, and I'll see you next well, Saturday. Well, more on Snowden and the future of surveillance in the United States, I spoke earlier with NSA whistleblower Bill Binney. I started by getting his opinion of the USA Freedom Act. Overall, it's a step in the right direction, but it's not really uh, addressing the complete problem by any means. I mean, it's addressing certain things like the metadata, bulk metadata acquisition from the companies, but it doesn't doesn't it deal with the bulk content collection and uh, metadata collection in the upstream program, which is the main one that's acquiring the vast amount of data that they're storing. Uh, it also gets on the order, I would say, of about 80% of the metadata, uh, and the uh, metadata business records program simply filled in the missing uh, parts. So uh, they're still getting at least 80% of it, um, and they're getting all the content with it, too. And that's basically all done under Executive Order 12333, with no oversight by Congress or the courts, or that that oversight would be ineffective anyway. They can, really can't monitor what the NSA is doing or what the FBI or CIA are doing with that data once they get it. I wanted to ask you, though, as uh, someone who resigned from the NSA and blew the whistle on, bulk, uh, on the bulk surveillance program nearly 15 years ago, are you where you thought we would be in terms of reform today? I'd hoped that we would be much further along. I mean, one of the simple things that Congress could do is to simply uh, pass a law that says no agency of the U.S. government uh, intelligence community or the law enforcement can hold data on a U.S. citizen uh, unless they have a, a warrant stating specifically the name of the person and showing probable causes as to why they have that data. That would be conforming to the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution and we be, would be constitutionally acceptable.